this hit goes out to you, Mr. Wick. When I got out of John Wick Chapter 4, I stepped outside and went full Ric Flair mode. Undoubtedly the best film of the franchise since the original, John Wick 4 is such an unapologetically masculine, hulking monster of unabashed testosterone-infused awesomeness, there isn't anything in recent memory that's gonna match up. I absolutely not! The past couple of years of big blockbusters have been hindered by an absurd amount of BS, but we were rewarded for our patience. Well, I didn't have any, but still. By the unflappable entertainment deliverer Tom Cruise in Top Gun Maverick. It was hailed by many as the savior of cinema, something the world of film desperately needed, and John Wick Chapter 4 is next up in helping to reestablish cinema as a force to be reckoned with, something worthy of your time, worthy of your attention, worthy of your hard-earned money. There are so many genres, subgenres, and different styles of film. Any one of them, done right, can reignite even the most cynical of cynics' flame for the love of movies. I'm here to tell you, John Wick Chapter 4 is one of those films. This is why we love movies, folks. A B-movie story concept made by the best in the business, it's nothing short of one of the greatest action films ever made. Thanks in no small part to the unbelievably talented choreographers working on this film, gorgeous cinematography and synchromatic music, a simple story with intrigue bubbling underneath with satisfying setups and payoffs, supporting characters that pop off the screen with charisma played by a dream cast of actors in almost every role, and a stoic lead actor who leans into his strengths while brushing off his weaknesses. As a love letter to Sergio Leone's westerns, samurai badassery in film noir, the testosterone bleeding out of the screen means you'll walk out of John Wick 4 with a full-on beard and an undying need to sign up for jujitsu. It's a film and franchise that knows exactly what it is, doesn't give a flying fuck about being anything else, and the world's a better place because of it. My personal praise for John Wick stems from how I try and approach most movies. Is it delivering to me what it promised me? There are always exceptions to rules, but I don't go to a food truck hoping for a fine dining meal. I want good food truck food. I'm not expecting The Godfather when I hear John Wick. At this point, I'm expecting John fucking Wick. It's why I took a great big ol' shit all over Avatar 2. If you sold it to me as just a visual spectacle, fine, it does that. But don't sit there and tell me it's one of the greatest stories ever told, James. Jesus Christ, man, get a hold of yourself. You don't have to like a thing just because it delivers on its promise. Maybe you're not an action movie fan, whatever it may be. But if you are a fan of the genre, and a film like John Wick comes along and promises you a badass, cold-blooded killer and a simple and absurd plot with some of the most unbelievable set pieces you've ever seen, well, it motherfucking delivers, and then some. I jumped out of my damn seat, pumping my fist in the air a few times, and the crowd I was with was right there with me, laughing, gasping, clapping, cheering. My advice, see this in a theater on the biggest screen possible. What's most impressive about John Wick Chapter 4 is how it manages to elevate the franchise without ever feeling like a cash grab. It's clear that the filmmakers really care about this world and these characters. And they're not just churning out another sequel for the sake of it. They've pushed the boundaries of what an action movie can be, and in doing so, they're creating something truly special. Let's go over the plot so we can start breaking this shit down. As simple as a story as it is on its surface, the movie is so damn fun it ends up with more twists and turns than a roller coaster made out of spaghetti. Picking right up where Chapter 3 left off, John Wick is still on the run after being declared excommunicado by the high table. He's still got a bounty on his head, and every assassin in the world's gunning for him. And apparently, everyone in the fucking universe is an assassin. And it's awesome. John is not one to go down without a fight, and he's set out on a mission to clear his name and take down the high table once and for all. As Winston would say, getting revenge is what John does best. Along the way, he teams up with some old friends, including the Bowery King, played by Lawrence Fishburne, and we meet some new friends and allies, including the forever badass Hiroyuki Sonata, playing the manager of the Osaka Hotel. John and his allies plot to take down the table, and we're introduced to Marquis Vincent de Gramont, a powerful member of the high table played by the enigmatic Bill Skarsgård. If you win, the table will honor its word who hires an assassin and friend of John's named Kane, played by Donnie Yen, who reluctantly has to track down his longtime friend, our Baba Yaga. The price on John's head keeps escalating as the film progresses, which makes for a ton of fun moments where it's assassin versus assassin fighting over who will kill John, meaning he's inadvertently assisted a number of times in hilarious and clever fashion throughout the movie. Fetch quests galore and gargantuan personalities in every set piece, the story lives to serve the audience. After four films, the movie successfully capitalizes on our attachment to the recurring characters, helped out by absolutely outstanding additions to the ensemble cast. 
Donnie Yen steals the motherfucking show here, and Bill Skarsgård is a slimy, smarmy, charming creep that I quickly love to hate. This dude is such a fucking star, man. He's fantastic and brings such gravitas to every role he does. Check out Barbarian to see a different side of him while he still maintains that creep factor we were introduced to in the film It. I won't give anything away. The story's light, obviously, but the twists, turns, and ending are so goddamn fun you should just go in and enjoy it. The conclusion is so satisfying, my audience is clapping during the finale, not at the credits. It's that damn good. I have a lot I want to get into, but I want to focus on this for a moment. The film's unapologetic, hyper-masculine nature. And that's not to say it's lacking badass female characters. There have been plenty in this series so far, and we're introduced to a new female protagonist in Part 4, and it's exciting to speculate where they'll go with her character in spinoffs. But this kind of hyper-masculinity is undoubtedly sorely missing in modern cinema. Anything to do with masculinity is frowned upon lately. Well, I mean, unless those traits are given to women who are equally stripped of anything feminine about them. Female empowerment indeed, just make them men, right? Well, this movie doesn't fuck around with that. Not at all. But it's not the trend in the ass steroid pumping meatheads of the 80s. It's, how would you describe it? What modern day masculinity should be if it were allowed to actually evolve without idiotic cultural interference. One of the greatest unabashedly macho movies of all time is Predator. It's one of my favorite films and is the first thing I think of when I think of the term manly. Dylan! You son of a bitch. Yeah. Stick around. This stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Just like me. Son of a bitch is dug in like an Alabama tick. You're hit. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. You one ugly motherfucker. John Wick 4 is a movie that stands toe to toe with Predator when it comes to testosterone infused badassery. So, you want to kill him? What about you, Mr. Vic? I'm going to kill you. John? Kane. So let's take a look at how these two things can be equally kick ass yet so, so different and figure out what makes John Wick such a perfect modern-day dudes movie. Both films are undeniably masculine in their portrayal of violence and aggression. They depict a world where strength, skill, and physical prowess are highly valued, and the protagonists are men who embody those qualities to an extreme. They represent two extremes of manly cool, the hulking, muscular epitome of 80s action in Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the smaller, fit, sleekly dressed, and quietly deadly action icon of the 90s to the present in Keanu Reeves. There are some other notable differences between the two films. John Wick Chapter 4 is a modern action movie that relies heavily on the use of guns and hand-to-hand -hand combat to create its sense of masculinity. It features an ultra-competent protagonist who's able to take on seemingly insurmountable odds through sheer skill and determination. Wick also includes elements of stylishness and sophistication, like its use of high-end weaponry and elegant settings. On the other hand, Predator is a classic 80s action film that emphasizes physical strength and survival skills. We get gun-touting awesomeness in one particular scene in the film's first act, but otherwise it's about brute strength in a survival movie. The protagonists in this movie are elite soldiers who have to use their training and teamwork to fight against a formidable alien foe. The film also incorporates elements of horror and suspense, as the characters are gradually picked off one by one by the Predator. In terms of similarities, they both feature tough, resilient male protagonists who are able to overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles through sheer force of will. Both films also highlight the importance of physical strength and skill, with one leaning more heavily toward the physical strength category, and both films emphasize the importance and value of honor and loyalty. So while both films share some similarities in their masculine portrayals, they also have distinct differences in terms of their use of violence, setting, and style. Ultimately, both films are enjoyable examples of the hyper-masculine action genre, each with its own unique strengths and appeal, depending entirely on the time in which they were released. Watching these two films back-to-back -back is a fun way to see the evolution of the action movie star, and you honestly cannot go wrong with either. But John Wick is the here and now, and motherfucker, it's awesome. That leads me to the action in John Wick 4, something the franchise is known for, but it's been dialed up to 12 with this one. This is what we came here for, right? All the pieces are set, and you'll be witnessing greatness when you sit down to watch this. The John Wick franchise is known for its outstanding action sequences. The films feature a wide variety of choreographed fight scenes, car chases, and gunfights all executed with precision and skill. The action sequences are intense, fast-paced, and leave you on the edge of your fucking seat. 
The film's stunt coordinators have created a unique style of action that incorporates a mix of martial arts and gunplay, making each fight scene feel fresh and exciting. But at a few points in Chapter 2 and 3, those action scenes became a bit numbing while still being extremely impressive. It made the original film shine even brighter with its smaller scale, brutal moments. Chapter 4, though, seems to have figured out how to up the ante while thankfully avoiding that numb feeling of experiencing visual noise. Every set piece is purposeful, and it's clear how meticulous the filmmakers were in planning and executing these. Each action scene is a story within a story. There are beginning, middles, and ends, and there are consistently moments that pop in each one that had me gasping, clapping, or laughing at the brutality and absurdity. These pops keep people's attention and keeps the lengthy scenes from falling into visual static territory. The kind of intricacy and thought put into these are astounding, and I'd suggest the delay caused by the pandemic actually helped the project. Which makes me question, why is the pandemic being used as an excuse constantly for film and television products that end up being complete dog shit? Greatness is achieved through stress, hard times, and difficult scenarios. What a surprise that certain studios would rather make excuses and not take accountability, while films like Spider-Man No Way Home, Top Gun, Everything Everywhere, and John Wick prove the pandemic is nothing but another excuse machine for studios to provide you with piss-poor products. Hey Feige, John Wick would like to have a word. There's one particular action sequence that is one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time. It's a top-down perspective, which we've seen before, yes. But the weapons used and length of the shot reminded me a lot of the video game Metal Gear Solid on PlayStation 1 back in the day. Normally, if I call the scene in a movie video game-esque, it'd be an insult, but that's usually because the film doesn't want you to perceive it that way. Wick 4 is absolutely right there with you, a nod and a wink at the audience saying, hey, isn't this absurdity fun? While we show up to John Wick for the action scenes, it wouldn't be the cultural phenomenon that it is without wonderful characters. In an outrageous over-the-top world, it's nothing but complimentary to have some over-the-top characters with big personalities. With the lead character being a man of few words, the sporting cast is vital, and goddamn do they do their job. There are two additions to the cast that push one into the stratosphere. Donnie Yen as Kane and Bill Skarsgård as Marquis, as mentioned. Donnie Yen has been underrated and underappreciated in his career, and it's great to see him given a role in such a huge franchise. His character Kane is a friend and reluctant nemesis to John, and he's not your typical menacing antagonist. He's witty, humane, and you're rooting for him at times when you couldn't imagine doing so because of his connection with the Baba Yaga. He brings a humanity to the role that keeps the audience away from disliking him. I'm sorry. Me too. The same kind of humanity that John has. He kills when he must, not because of bloodlust. Skarsgård as Marquis, on the other hand, is a menacing, despicable little bitch who will be more than happy to judge others for not participating in the cause, while also being a pussy when it comes to holding up his end of the bargain. You come here thinking there is a way out of this world for you, Mr. Wick. There is not. Skarsgård is such a brilliant actor, and when this guy's on the screen, he's so captivating you can't help but appreciate his character's sliminess. Shamir Anderson plays Nobody Slash The Tracker, an assassin who plays off of Wick and Kane and bounces back and forth between you're not paying me enough to hunt John Wick to alright, that'll do. While I really enjoy the character, it might have been more appropriate to have Halle Berry kind of fill this role. It's not a bad addition whatsoever, it's just interesting they decided to go this route when they had a role like this already perfectly suited with Miss Berry. Still, he's good fun on the screen and his character brings some things full circle to John and the audience. The rest of the returning supporting cast is great, with Lance Reddick playing his role for the final time. Rest in peace, you fucking badass. Ian McShane and Lawrence Fishburne return as well, and are as good as ever in their roles they've mastered over multiple movies. Although, I have to question, is Fishburne legitimately going insane in real life? I feel like his performances get more and more over the top. Totally fine for a John Wick movie, but he's come a long way since A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3. Alright, great, because I have you set up in your own space... By the end of the week. Um, patient's rooms down this way. And that brings us to the man, the legend, Keanu Reeves. While no one would ever consider him the greatest actor on earth, he's at least consistent and has been a gargantuan movie star for decades for a reason. He's been in legendary projects from the 80s up to the present, and that kind of career is few and far between. On and off the screen, he's beloved. The guy is like if a kitten and a ninja had a baby. You can't dislike Keanu. While his line delivery isn't always the greatest, the man plays into his strengths while minimizing attention to his weaknesses. John Wick is stoic, uses an economy of words, and delivers a brutal end to hundreds of people. That's where Keanu's strength lies. 
Dating back to his hit films Speed and the Matrix, he sinks everything into the artistry required to make it look as real and authentic as he possibly can. The Matrix Resurrections, also known as the worst film ever made, proved he's getting long in the tooth because he can't move as fast as he could in the 90s, but the John Wick franchise keeps the man fresh. Instead of almost exclusively kung fu, we're talking gun fu, meaning he still comes off as the most badass person on the planet even at 58 years old. It doesn't require the speed the character of Neo did, but if anyone's seen the behind the scenes training videos of him for John Wick, he's one of the most dedicated men in Hollywood when it comes to making his character feel like the real deal. Countless professionals in the military and firearm experts have complimented how authentic his weapon handling abilities are, and that's a testament to his undying need to do his absolute best. It shines on the screen. In a crazy surreal world, John Wick never feels like he doesn't know what he's doing. That's because of Keanu's dedication. He's simply one of the greatest, and arguably the greatest, action stars of all time. And the film looks so beautiful, it makes me want to dive into the profession of cinematography just to learn more. Besides writing, I'm a visual artist, so I have an interest and adoration for a great-looking film. Last year, we had The Batman, and however you feel about that movie, you can't deny its visual moodiness. And that shit was robbed of an Academy Award nomination in that department, just saying. And John Wick 4 better not be snubbed, because it's one of the most visually stimulating movies in recent memory. If everything in this film is an assault on the senses, the gorgeous shots, locations, and color palette holds up its end of that bargain. Cinematographer Dan Lawson is on another level here. And I have to bring this up. You can't talk about the John Wick franchise without talking about The Matrix. Okay, so what do you need? Besides a miracle. Guns. Lots of guns. What do you need? Guns. Lots of guns. They have quite a few similarities, and it's no coincidence. The two franchises share the same creative team behind the scenes. John Wick actually started out as a passion project for Keanu. He's not only the star of the film, he's also a producer. Reeves had always been a fan of action movies and wanted to make his own, but he was tired of the over-the-top CGI-heavy blockbusters that were dominating the genre at the time. And don't get it backwards, he starred in a few of those stinkers himself. So, he teamed up with stunt coordinators Chad Stahelski and David Leash, who had worked with him on the Matrix trilogy, and together they began to develop a different kind of action movie. The result was John Wick a film that was grounded in reality and relied on practical stunts and real-life fighting techniques instead of computer-generated effects. The movie was a critical and commercial success, and it quickly became clear that audiences were hungry for more. So how does it connect to The Matrix beyond the production team? For starters, the franchises are of course known for their incredible action sequences and the influence they've left on cinema. The Matrix revolutionized action filmmaking with its use of wire work, slow motion, and other visual effects, and John Wick's continued that legacy with its own unique style of choreography and cinematography. The fight scenes in both franchises are beautifully crafted and incredibly memorable, and they both feature some of the best action sequences in modern cinema. Another similarity between the two is their world building. The Matrix created a rich and detailed universe filled with complex ideas and philosophical concepts, and John Wick's done the same thing with its own unique mythology. Both franchises have their own rules and lore that help make their worlds feel fully realized. And that basis in mythology and symbolism is perhaps the biggest influence that The Matrix has had on the John Wick franchise. The Matrix is filled with religious and philosophical imagery from the Christ-like resurrection of Neo to the Buddhist concept of emptiness. John Wick, on the other hand, draws heavily from European folklore and mythology, with characters like the High Table and the Bowery King representing different aspects of that mythology. Both franchises are also deeply concerned with ideas of fate, destiny, and free will. The Matrix explores the concept of choice and whether or not our decisions are truly our own, while John Wick delves into the idea of destiny and whether or not we can ever truly escape our pasts. These themes give both franchises a depth and complexity that sets them apart from other action movies. The Matrix sequels, in my opinion, failed because they harped on these themes too much instead of worrying about making an entertaining story. If John Wick is every bit the spiritual successor of that franchise, it learned from the Matrix sequel's mistakes and puts entertainment first and the themes and mythology are gravy on top. When the first John Wick movie hit theaters in 2014, no one could have predicted that it would go on to become one of the biggest action franchises of the decade. But now, with four movies and a spin-off TV show under its belt, the John Wick franchise has established a powerful legacy and become an absolute force in popular culture. It's redefined the action genre, created a unique and memorable world, sparked a cultural phenomenon, features a charismatic and relatable protagonist, and has a dedicated fan base because of it all. 
It's no wonder these movies have become such a big part of our cultural zeitgeist. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual viewer, there's no denying that John Wick has left a lasting impact on the world of cinema. And John Wick Chapter 4 only adds to the franchise's legacy. I can't fucking wait to go see this movie again, and I give it the highest of recommendations to any action movie fan. GG's, gents. Yo, yo, yo.